Among the untold devastating numbers of those who died during the Death Star's destruction, the prestigious Grand Moff Tarkin was one of them. However, despite losing one of his most powerful underlings, the Emperor wasn't actually all that torn up about it. In fact, our researchers have found evidence that Darth Sidious was actually glad that Tarkin had died when he did. Greetings again, curious acolytes, and welcome back to the Archives. The Imperial Hierarchy was a strange thing. Sidious's inner circle included Vader, Thrawn, and of course Tarkin. Though there were other governors, moffs, directors, and grand moffs, very few had the kind of prestige that Tarkin carried with him. Tarkin was very close to the Emperor and had his ear on several matters. This is in fact one of the things that annoyed Darth Vader the most. As Tarkin had so much power, he was able to undermine Vader's authority in certain places, something that Vader thought should not be possible. With all this considered, it is an incredibly curious thing why Sidious would actually be pleased by Tarkin's death. So for this holocron, we are going to examine Tarkin's career and what made him so powerful and dangerous. Then, we are going to explain why Darth Sidious took extreme caution with him. Grand Moff Tarkin was a man second only to the Emperor. One is the same rank as Vader, the Sith Lord's very apprentice, and one of Sidious's most trusted governors. Of all the agents of the Imperial Hierarchy, Grand Moff Tarkin was assuredly the most competent, with the exception of perhaps Grand Admiral Thrawn. But even Thrawn paid respects to Tarkin many times, calling him a tactical genius himself. Tarkin was a man who had reached his position through nothing but sheer willpower and intellect, and he took advantage of every single privilege that the position offered. Not to mention, time and time again, Grand Moff Tarkin proved to be one of, if not the most ruthless and effective agent of the Empire. There were many high-ranking Imperial officers who were ruthless in their strengths. For instance, you have Grand General Taje, to name one, and of course, Grand Admiral Yularen, who served in the Clone Wars and had had his spot in the Death Star Council for some time, as much time as Tarkin did. However, it was Grand Moff Tarkin who rose above all of these and had not only the Emperor's ear, but his favor as well. This all started and ended with Tarkin's penchant towards doing everything that was necessary to achieve his goals and to further the goals of the Empire. Tarkin was one of those who not only followed the Empire because it was beneficial to him, but because Tarkin truly believed in it. In the Clone Wars, Tarkin was a commander under Jedi General Peel. Tarkin had a front row seat to what he believed to be the Republic's and the Jedi's ineptitude on the battlefield during the Clone War. He shared Sidious's opinion that the Jedi weren't doing nearly enough to properly take care of the galaxy's problems. Not only that, but the Republic and the Jedi constantly got in each other's way, which just made the whole system look utterly weak. Tarkin himself grew to hate the Republic and the Jedi. Eventually, Commander Tarkin would retire from the military, instead seeking out a political career. Following this, Tarkin would quickly be elected governor of his homeworld, as well as in the sector of Siswana. Since he was a rising politician himself, Tarkin would be acquainted with Palpatine. In fact, the two men had something in common, their hatred of aliens. Once the Empire rose, Tarkin decided to cash in his favor with Palpatine and be put in place in the Imperial Navy, becoming a moth. For his first few years, Moff Tarkin would be instrumental in building the Imperial Navy's presence on many planets. However, Tarkin's ambition didn't stop there, as he saw how many systems were still out of line. He was chasing down pirates only for them to be aided in their escape with the help of growing rebel sects and insurgencies. It would be at this point that Tarkin took the biggest step of his career, riding the Tarkin Doctrine also known as the Doctrine of Terror, or the Rule of Fear. This was a private note addressed straight to the Emperor himself, in which Tarkin discussed his growing concerns with the insurgency of several systems. In the address, Tarkin puts forth the idea of dividing the galaxy into what he calls the Oversectors, which essentially were collections of three sectors of star systems which Rebellion was being newly born in. This bypassed all previously known sector borders that had been in place for thousands of years, and by Tarkin's recommendation, each oversector would be supervised by one specific individual with direct communication with the Emperor himself. In Tarkin's own words to the Emperor, this will bypass any delays caused by political opportunism in your advisors. Tarkin would also say this about exterminating the rebels. Rule through the fear of force rather than force itself. If we use our strength wisely, we shall co thousands of worlds with the example of a select few. 
These examples would need to be highly visible worlds, whose punishment would be further revealed through our control of information via the hypermedia. With this, we are already beginning to see the birth of the depraved plan to destroy the world of Alderaan. What's important though, is that the Tarkin Doctrine was written far before Tarkin knew of the Death Star. What this essentially meant though, is without knowing anything of its existence, Tarkin put forth the recommendation of a super weapon, or even several. In his address, he mentions how the average citizen views the power of a Star Destroyer, and how they don't think in terms of numbers or calculation but in size and symbols. Most rebellious systems lost their resolve to fight when comparing the size of a Star Destroyer against whatever craft they had. Without regard of any tactical reasoning, Tarkin puts forth the idea to take this same mentality and apply it to a super weapon. A weapon that meant to be the very symbol of the Empire and its strength. Tarkin then goes on to say this, If we present the galaxy with a weapon so powerful, so immense as to defy all conceivable opposition against it, a weapon invulnerable and invincible in battle, then that weapon shall become the symbol of the Empire. It must have force enough to dispatch an entire system, power enough to shatter planets. The fear such a weapon will inspire will be great enough for you to rule the galaxy unchallenged. The Tarkin Doctrine impressed Palpatine immensely, to the point where he promoted him to Grand Moff, but also put him in control of the construction of the Death Star. Tarkin's work spoke for itself once the galaxy was put in line, and Tarkin was essentially right-hand man next to Vader himself. Palpatine had written an entire manifesto about ruling with fear, and he mentioned how frustrated he was with his governors, since none of them listened, or even seemed to grasp the concept of fear. None of them, except for Grand Moff, Wilhuff, Tarkin. But this favor would not be enough to save Tarkin's life. Despite everything he did for the Empire, and for the Emperor himself, Sidious did not trust him at all. There was a great deal of dissension among the Imperial officials. Each of them were stabbing at each other in order to climb the ranks of the hierarchy that Palpatine had established. This reminded Sidious of the minions of the ancient Sith. Palpatine allowed this to happen, as it would call out the weaklings and leave only the strongest and most cunning men in higher positions. However, what happens when the most cunning man goes as high as he possibly can? Where exactly does he go from there? This question left Darth Sidious cautious of Tarkin. In the Book of the Sith, Palpatine makes this comment in the margins of a very important page. Tarkin is fortunate to have died along with the other commanders when the Death Star exploded. He had far too much ambition, and his days were numbered. What this reveals to us, if Tarkin had not died on the Death Star, then Sidious would have likely staged something to make sure that Tarkin was at an end anyway. What happened is Vader may have been allowed to do what he desired most, force choke the life out of Tarkin for his failure. Or Sidious would have disposed of him some other way. Even the man who pleased the Emperor the most didn't have total immunity. This was the cost of following the Sith. But anyway my friends and acolytes, what are your thoughts on this? And what are your thoughts on why Sidious was glad that Tarkin perished on the Death Star? As always, may the Force be with you and I hope that you have a great day.